All right, got uh, power going from my, through the multimeter and coming out of the multimeter, going into the, uh, through the fuse and into the heater and then coming back out. So I completed a circuit and I put the multimeter in the circuit and I got 0 0.06 amps which is just with the device, uh, with just the uh, powered up, you know, showing the monitoring. So let's see what happens when we turn on the unit. And my multimeter is only good for uh, 10 amp max. So let's hope that uh, we don't blow the multimeter. So power is on. So right now, there goes the amp. I can feel so yesterday I blew that uh, little unit because I got to more than five amps. And let's see what it gets up to. Sure. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off because my amp meter is only set for 15 amps or 10 amps. Oh. Stop heating. So yeah, that's a 20 amp fuse. And the symbol here says, you know, power source. And I guess it means that the power source itself has to be greater than 15 amps. Okay, so here's the power supply I decided to buy. This one's a little bit beefier. The original 2-amp one I had wasn't uh, powerful enough because the unit, when it's starting up, draws uh, 15 amps to, um, you know, to warm up the glow plugs because it is a diesel. Once it's going, 2 amps is enough, but you need more than 2 to start it. So I got this um, D or AC to DC uh, rectifier. Some people call them, um, you know, a... Uh, uh, a power supply, but officially the name is it's a rectifier, and uh, you know they're they're cheap. I mean, this is uh, twenty bucks on Amazon. It's for like home projects for computers or uh, LED lights and things like that. So I got I got my two connections. I got my live uh, alternating current and my neutral, and then I got my ground. And then on this one, I can actually power different devices. I have two voltages, negative voltage out, and two positive voltage out. And I have this little, um, there's this little switch there or little knob that can be adjusted to make sure I have exactly 12 volts. So I'll, I'll hook this up and uh, we'll put the power, me uh, the amp meter on there again. And, you know, it'll be part of the testing, but I wanted to do it properly. And of course, you know, I have, I have extension cords that I could have cut and, you know, you can just cut some wires and do something with it, you know, but um it's also just as easy. Again, you go on Amazon and you buy a power cord and check it out. You know, the power cord already comes with uh, your ground, your live, which is white in North America, and then black, which is the neutral. And, uh, you know, it's this thing isn't color coded, but it's it's pretty easy to connect it. You slip in, you know, the ends are already uh, stripped. You strip them in there and you tighten them down and very easy to do the connections. I'll show you that in the shop. Got to connect this. Uh, the, this is the power supply into the power into the heater. This is the power supply. This is the cord. So let's do uh, one thing at a time. All right. So I'm gonna connect this power cord to the live, neutral, and ground. So the North American convention here in Canada, live is black, black and red, neutral is white, and uh, green is the, um, the ground. So the first one in there is the live, which is black. Ok, 
Okay, so that's my power supply, my, my power in. And then I have two choices for the outlet. Okay, so live, neutral, and uh, ground, and then positive or negative and positive. So that goes to a power supply, which will get plugged into a 110 volt outlet. And then the other end feeds the unit. Here's my sort of test setup here. Got the uh, heater there. Um, exhausting underneath my main uh, shop door because I needed to get exhaust outside for safety and then I got my power supply and as soon as I plugged it in the screen comes on so I have I'll change the time I'll set it properly in a second here and then if I go outside here's my exhaust that. Okay, so I sorry for the shaking. Uh, I got a temperature gauge in my shop right now, and inside my shop it is five degrees uh, Celsius, right on the line between green and red. All right. Um, don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but here's here's the app. So I turned on the app. I downloaded the app. Uh, turned it on and it paired pretty instantly with this device. So it found it on, uh, you know, it's Bluetooth and it found it. So now all I got to do is hit this. I mean, and the screen is incredible. It's showing me 11 degrees inside the, 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 the phone is, or this is registering 11 degrees. I don't know why, but, um, well, actually I don't think the readings are real because I haven't started it. So now I'm going to hit this button and start it. And look at that. It started and now it's doing its heating cycle. It's showing me it's drawing 12.1 uh, volts. It's showing me that the temperature is set for 9 degrees. Is it? Actually, I have it on. Um, let me see what I. Well, let's wait until it fires up before I, I go through too many things. But yeah, it's showing me quite a bit of information. Pretty cool. Yeah, so it takes a few minutes before the globe, I mean, it's diesel, right? It's similar to a uh, same principle as your diesel truck. There's a glow plug in there that needs to be heated up. And once it's heated up, then the diesel can be introduced. So there's no ticking yet. So it hasn't started pumping any fluid. All it's doing right now is warming up the glow plug here. Oh, it's telling me it's doing ignition preparation. Look at that. Look at the display. Fascinating. Not fascinating, brilliant. Love it. Eleven point two volts. So it's pulling a bit of volt. It's uh, the voltage is. It's running on level. I'm gonna switch it over to temperature. Automatic level. Now it's switched over to temperature. And it says it's set to 27. I'm going to decrease it. I'm going to set it to... Oh, it is at minimum level. Okay. This temperature is the exhaust temperature of the gas. I see it 36, 37. And that's the temperature that it's sensing in the room. But it's on minimum level right now. Yeah, it's starting to make heat. the temperature oh see what it said there stable stable combustion wow stable combustion so now I'm going to increase the temperature level three 
Oh no, it's running on state on level. I'm going to run it on automatic level mode. The, the icons make sense, right? It's showing me it's 1,350 meters of altitude, which I know is correct because I live in Alberta, you know, 3,000 feet above sea level, and there's the mountain. The thermometer with the building over it, that's the room temperature. So it thinks it's at thin, fit, uh, 13 degrees, which is in disagreement with the thermometer that I have in the shop. I think it's cooler than that in the shop. 15 degrees Celsius here is a set point. Uh, 114 must be the temperature of the uh, the chamber and then I'm pulling 12 volts so everything's pretty cool okay so it's running too slow on automatic because it thinks it's it's sensing 14 degrees Celsius its uh, set point is 15 and it's choosing to be on absolutely the minimum speed so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, put it back to instead of auto. I'm going to put it on manual. Sorry, uh, I do that here. So now it's on level, and I'm going to crank up the level. Level seven shows in the corner here. Set point level seven, and then I'm going to let it run like this for a while. Now it's putting out heat quite a bit because I want to warm up the shop so I might as well run it at a you know at, get it up to the temperature if I was already at the temperature that I wanted then I would put it on a set point closer and let the let it con control itself to that set point ran out of fuel all right so this thing has a lot of safety features interesting all right it's uh it's been about an hour it's a big shop and uh, it's going to take forever to warm up but it's warmed up like two degrees and uh, that's pretty impressive i'm happy with that now it's localized i'm sure it's only you know if i if i measure the back corner of the shop it's probably still cold but um you know it's it's not that big of a unit i mean it's uh 27 000 btu so it's not huge all i wanted for is to uh, take the chill out of the shop all right well the testing wasn't as long as I thought it would be. Um, everything was pretty straightforward. Um, so, so what did I find out? Well, first of all, the unit works brilliantly. You know, you, uh, you, you power it up, you fill it up with fuel, and you turn it on, and you choose whether you put it on standard uh, temperature control mode or on manual mode, and it does its thing. It ran out of fuel and, and, and it was, you know, it was struggling. So it ran a self diagnostic. The diagnostic revealed that it was out of fuel. So it shut itself down. I refilled it with fuel and then it restarted up brilliantly. Um, the, the app that comes with it is, is very, um, comprehensive. I mean, it shows you the modes that it's in, the stages that it's going through, the uh, elevation, the um, the uh, temperature, the set points, the temperature of the uh, air coming out. So it's really cool and it's very intuitive and easy to use. And um, the only test I did was to put it on uh, temperature control. And to do a proper temperature control, I'd have to put it in a small space, you know, um, a small garage or something like that where I could really control like a car would be an ideal environment let's say where you could see how it behaves you know how it maintains its temperature this space here is too big but I it was obvious that what it does is it it ramps up until it thinks it's achieved the temperature that it's been asked to uh, to hold at and then it slows down, but it doesn't shut itself off. So it's not the kind of unit that would turn itself on and off. So it's kind of like, you know, the heater in your car when you're driving. Um, yeah, you can, do, you can turn it off to zero, but if you don't and you try and temperature control, you're going to reach some limits at some point, whether it's on the low end or, or the high end. So um, it's not something that you would leave unsupervised, hoping that it would maintain the temperature of a space. It's more of a device that's used when you're supervising it, as in 
if it's in the car while you're camping or while you're working in your shop, but I wouldn't turn it on unsupervised and leave it on. That and it would run out of fuel unless you put a bigger tank. Anyways, first thoughts, first impressions. It works exactly uh, as advertised. It's got some nice little features. Easy to install, easy to set up. Um, versatile, you can use it, like I said in, in before, you know, a, a car, a small shop, a small space, a nice fishing tent if you want. Uh, works on 12 volt. I have it working on 120 volt uh, power supply through um, a rectifier and putting out 12 volts. So very flexible unit. $169 Canadian and you can't really go wrong. Um, you know, that's my recommendation. The unit does exactly as advertised and you're getting good value. Cheers, folks.